Hello and welcome back to this GCSE Chemistry Revision Series brought to you by RevisedChemistry.uk. In today's video, we're going to be learning about electrolysis, including molten electrolysis and electrolysis of solution. Electrolysis is the process of passing electrical current, specifically direct current, through a solution or a molten ionic compound to decompose the electrolyte. This separates the compound into ions and elements will be discharged at the electrodes. Inert electrodes are normally used, otherwise they will react with the solution or the products. Electrolysis can only be done using ionic compounds as it requires free ions to move. This is why it can only be done in solution or in the molten liquid state. If electrolysis is completed with a solution, then hydrogen and hydroxide ions are also present, as water will also dissociate. During electrolysis, positively charged ions, or cations, will migrate to the negatively charged electrode, known as the cathode, and negatively charged ions, known as the anions, will migrate to the positively charged electrode, the anode. During electrolysis of solution, not only are there the ions present in the compound we're trying to break apart, but there are also other ions present, H plus and OH minus from water. Working out what is made at each electrode requires you know the rules of electrolysis. At the cathode, the least reactive element will be the one that is discharged, and this is either hydrogen or a metal. As most metals are more reactive than hydrogen, Normally hydrogen is what is produced, however if a metal like copper is present then it will be discharged as it is less reactive than hydrogen. At the anode, halide ions will be discharged first and they will produce halogen gases. If there are no halide ions present then hydroxide ions will be discharged as oxygen gas. If there are no halide or hydroxide ions then sulphate ions will be given off as oxygen gas and if there are any other negative ions they will then be given off if none of the previous three are present. Those doing the higher tier need to be able to write half equations to explain what is going on at each electrode. On the screen now are the half equations for both the cathode and the anode. You may be required to write half equations for group 1 metals, hydrogen, some transition metals, or for the production of group 7 halogen gases, or for the production of oxygen. Each half equation shows what is going on in terms of electrons. We know that there are ions present in solution and when they approach an electrode they either gain electrons or lose electrons. The ions that gain electrons we say are reduced and the ions that lose electrons we say are oxidized. Some common electrolytes are shown on the screen now. Copper chloride, sodium chloride, sodium sulfate, and water acidified with sulfuric acid. You need to be able to recognize in an exam what products are made at each electrode. You can figure this out by using your rules of electrolysis. Remember, at the anode, we either produce halide, if there are none of those present, we will then produce oxygen gas. At the cathode, we will produce the least reactive of either the hydrogen or metal. As said previously, most metals are more reactive than hydrogen, so trying to extract them using electrolysis of solution is not going to be very helpful. So what we can do instead is do molten electrolysis. This is really easy to figure out what products are going to be made, as it's just the two components that made up the ionic salt to start with. For example, lead bromide will be split up into lead and bromine, and sodium chloride will split up into sodium and chlorine. Metals that are more reactive than carbon are actually extracted using electrolysis. Aluminium oxide is insoluble in water, so it has to be molten anyway to be extracted as an electrolyte. A lot of energy must be transferred to break aluminium's ionic bonds, and this is expensive, so to reduce costs, powdered aluminium oxide is dissolved in something called molten cryolite. This melts at a much lower temperature than aluminium oxide and helps to reduce costs. We use carbon electrodes when we extract aluminium and so they have to be replaced regularly 
as they react with the oxygen gas produced. Copper can be purified by electrolysis. Electricity is passed through solutions containing copper compounds such as copper sulfate. In this process, the anode will be made from impure copper and the cathode is made from pure copper. Copper ions are positive, so they move to the negative electrode. During electrolysis, the anode loses mass as copper dissolves and the cathode gains mass as the copper is deposited here. We can also use inert electrodes, such as graphite electrodes, to produce copper deposits. However, rather than the anode mass decreasing, like it does in copper purification, we produce oxygen gas. We can test this using a glowing splint, and if it relights, then oxygen is present. <laughs>